Hello kings and queens, this is my full review for Tears of the Kingdom. I have played it so far for 70 hours. I have completed the main story, done some side missions like get the master sword for example and I've only seen maybe 30%. The game has a crazy amount of content, but starting with the story, the story has been truly amazing. The story is a bit darker than Breath of the Wild that is noticeable in the first cutscene where a zombie Ganondorf gets revived. The story elaborates a lot about the Zonai and explains how Ganondorf became evil. I like the story a lot more than Breath of the Wild, especially the ending is really beautiful. The way Ganondorf is portrayed is chef kiss. Also there is a special cutscene for when you collect all tears. That scene is definitely worth checking as it gives more information about Zelda, but I won't say any more about the story. Moving further to the map, the map is extremely big. The map is divided in three parts, sky, surface and depth. You start the game in the sky and it looks truly amazing and the first time you look around in the sky area you will think holy shit this world is so big. It kind of feels overwhelming at times. However, as you progress you understand that there is a structure. Usually every sky map has like 2-3 big islands where there is some stuff to do and to find. So far the tutorial sky map was the biggest one. The sky islands are not that big but they usually have a good loot box and a zonite device system. There you, can there you can get different types of sonar, like the rocket or a plane, etc. From the sky you can dive towards the surface. The transition from the sky to the surface is really cool. You can see so many things happening on the world, like the immortal dragons, you can see the tree-headed dragon, and keep an eye out when you surface down because you will see so many things. The surface map itself is basically Breath of the Wild. Some parts are almost exactly identical. For example, the Zora domain is as far as I can tell an exact replica of the Breath of the Wild map, with the only difference that in the Tears of the Kingdom version, the world is covered in sludge, which is some sort of mud. Eventually the sludge or mud is removed and then it's exactly the same. The surface map is still the biggest, and just like in Breath of the Wild, there's really so much to do and find. 1010 10 here again on the map activity, like the amount of site missions, the the caves, the the secrets that you can discover, it's really a lot. Like every town that you visit has some special site mission and it's just really fun to do and explore. From the surface we can go into the depth. The depth are accessed by caves and these caves or dungeons are far below the surface of Hyrule. The depth is also one big map and it is completely dark and you have to uncover it by using small plants which give lights. The, the blight bloom. Because there is no light, the depth feels even more bigger as you don't know where it ends. Just to give you an idea of how big it is, I've played the game so far for 70 hours and still haven't completely seen the depth map. The depth does have the best weapons, loot and armor, so going there is almost mandatory. The story will provide you one time to go into the depth, but other than that it's optional when you go into it. But I would recommend to have some good proper loot and armor before you go in. Moving further to the gameplay, the gameplay is truly the same as in Breath of the Wild, like everything that was in the first game is here as well, only difference now is the fusing of course, and that Link doesn't have the bomb mechanics anymore. The fusing is truly amazing, you can fuse one weapon with a food item or another weapon, it has endless limits of options. The boss fights are epic in this game, I'm not talking about the main bosses alone but also about the optional bosses in the world itself. But just to touch briefly on the main bosses, they have the same structure as Breath of the Wild as in you will first solve a puzzle and then fight the boss. The puzzles can be really hard, I was stuck sometimes for hours but that can also be me because I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Other than that, the final boss you guys will definitely love, Ganondorf has been Ganondorf is obviously the final boss and he has been portrayed so cool and eventually his final form that you will see is probably the best I have ever seen of him in any Zelda game. Optional bosses have to be found in Hyrule world itself and there are plenty of them. My favorite are the three headed dragons of which there are three different elemental versions and also a king version. There are also Lynels and make sure to defeat them as they give a great bow. The Lynels are also very tough in this game. Another optional thing but something which is very cool are the immortal dragons. They are now touchable so you can ride in the sky, land on the dragons and get their shards. Also you can just land on the dragon and just stay on them and just see how they travel to Hyrule Kingdom. It's really cool, I, I love the dragons and the dragons also play a bigger role in the story this time. 
Overall, my conclusion, this is the best Zelda game made. If you love Breath of the Wild, you will love Tears of the Kingdom, because this game is basically Breath of the Wild, but just improved and better. The map, the world, the story, it has everything that you want. If you love the story, the game has that. If you love exploring, the game defo has that. If you love fusing, it is there. So for me, this game receives a 10-10. Let me know what you think of it, and see you with the next video. Thank you for watching.